thrilled, uh, very, very excited. Uh, we had done very simple things, essentially made balloon-like robot arms. And what Disney did is it took that very simple idea, essentially bags of air, and turned the bags of air into a lovable character, Baymax. And I was thrilled to see what they had done with it. Now, I can see that from the smile on your face. Let's talk a little bit about how robots fit into the global landscape today. We see youth competitions now, students competing to try and build the best robot. The big criticism, though, is that the groups tend to be male-dominated. Do you think that's the case, and what can be done to get more girls or women involved? So I think it is true that uh, there are many more males than females involved in these contests. And there's also a contest I'm involved in called the DARPA Robotics Challenge. And even our own team is male dominated uh, as the other teams I've seen. So this is a pervasive problem at, at both the young levels and at, at my level. Uh, one of the things we can do to deal with this is to make different kinds of robots. Current robots are made out of metal. They're essentially machined. Uh, I'm interested in something called soft robots, which we make the same way we make clothes or inflatable pool toys. Essentially, they're sewn or glued or put together. And this means that the technologies that have often been associated with something called home economics, things you do at home, even making dolls, can now be used to make interesting kinds of robots. And maybe that's one of the factors that'll encourage uh, young women to get excited about robots. Fascinating. Uh, another knock, I'm sure you've heard it about uh, robots, whether or not they actually take jobs away from people in places like factories and assembly lines. I want to read you something, though. This comes from a marketing firm. This was published back in 2011. It actually argues that robots create jobs. In world terms, three to five million jobs would not exist if automation and robotics had not been developed to enable cost-effective production of millions of electronic products from phones to PlayStations. Do you agree? I agree. Uh, this is a debate that's been going on for a long time, not just about robots, but about computers uh, and even whether electricity uh, got rid of jobs or created jobs. I think the people who studied it have said up to now, technology increases the number of jobs, even though we're more productive. What people are uncertain about is perhaps the qualitative change in the future when we sort of replace brain work rather than muscle work. Uh, is that going to work differently, or is that going to basically be the same as what has happened up to now? And I'm not sure we know the answer to that question. You're bullish on people, which is good to see. What are some of the areas where we are seeing robots having more of an impact, areas like perhaps disaster response? What are some areas that you're seeing? Well. One of the things we're trying to do is get robots to be ready for the next big disaster. We weren't ready for the Fukushima disaster, uh, where the tsunami hit the nuclear power plant. And then, because everything was so radioactive, they couldn't actually get into the plant to turn it off. And then it, it blew up within a day. Uh, we weren't ready for that. We didn't have robots that could do that. So we're trying to get ready for that. I think. You're hearing about a lot about uh, self-driving cars, which are robots, essentially, that are in the form of an automobile. Uh, there are a lot of interesting legal issues and policy issues there. But I think what we'll start to see is a lot of lives saved because driving will be much safer. Uh, so I think you know those are two areas where robots are sort of uh, will be will happen. Chris Atkinson, uh, robotics professor, joining us from Pittsburgh. Thanks so much. Thank you.